Hey everyone, welcome to Know Your Gear QA number 153. Hopefully everyone is having a good week. I know a lot of you are either stuck at home or out there working extra or at home working extra or maybe just locked up bored out of your mind. But either way, I figured uh, let's start the show. We'll start uh, going on things. I need to make a couple brief announcements that are important. The first thing is, is that I'm being told by the uh, the service providers that because of so many people at home and there's so much internet traffic that I might have issues with my live streaming. That being said, two things. One, we'll push through if there is issues. So let's, let's deal with that. The second thing is this show, we're gonna cut off exactly one hour uh, because of that reason. I don't wanna bog down the internet any more than I have to. Uh, so to, I will guarantee you guys, I will do these shows every Friday, add in some extra ones, but what I'll do is I'll keep them to that to the spectrum so that we, you know, we could share the internet. We have to share everybody. It's time to share. Um, another thing that's interesting, that's important is if you're new to the show and it's your first time watching my live show, I will index all the things we talk about in the description. So you can go right to those things. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You can also stream it on iTunes as a podcast. It's KYG podcast. Uh, and just listen to it if you'd like to on your leisure. And today, something, uh, speaking of bad internet connections and problems, I did a podcast with Mrs. Smith. Those of you guys who know Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Smith had the wall off with Kirk Hammett where she won the wall off. Uh, and I'll put links when I index this to her video where you can see the wall off as it, as it was. And also a link to the pedal board that won. I'm going to show you the pedal board right now. Um, let me go ahead and share that with you for a reason. There's a reason why I'm sharing this with you. Um, is two things. Here's the wah pedal wah. More importantly, I want to show you right here. If you can see my cursor, this is the wah pedal that won. And if you're looking at this thinking it looks strange, it's because it's actually one, two, three, four, 95 Q Dunlop wah pedals with one giant board. She actually wad with all four wah pedals at one. That's what brought down Kirk Hammett destroying him as the wah lord of all times. There's an I uh, to share that with you, besides the fact that it's a cool looking pe pedal board. And like I said, you can uh, look at that pedal board. You could actually check out the entire review. I'll put the link to at Sweetwater where they go through because Sweetwater built the board for her. But unfortunately, because of uh, numerous internet issues, uh, it's almost impossible to air the podcast that I filmed with Mrs. Smith. Uh, the video quality is really bad. We we ended up doing, I think we did it for five hours. We tried on Sunday morning. And uh, it was a, a lot of effort on Mrs. Smith's part to do this thing. So it's kind of, you know, kind of sad. If I can salvage the audio, I will put it up as the podcast. We can probably reshoot it. I haven't talked to her, but at this point, I just want to start the, 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 the uh, part where Sweetwater is giving away a Kirk Hammett wah pedal. So in the link in the description right now, you don't even have to wait to the rebroadcast. Uh, I asked Sweetwater if they would give a Kirk Hammett wah pedal away. They said, yes, you click the link down below. You can win a Kirk Hammett wah. So when you're at home in isolation, you can click on what I think is the coolest looking wah pedal of all time. Uh, I actually like the way it sounds. It's very cool wah pedal. I've always liked it, but I've always thought it was the coolest looking wah pedal. To me, it just looks like, it's funny, it's not a Kirk Hammett thing to me. This looks like it belongs on, on a Vans t-shirt or a skateboard. I just think every time I see this, I think I'm looking at the coolest skateboard wah of all times. Um, that, maybe that's an idea, uh, a wah pedal. You know what, if I ever had my personal wah pedal, it would be a little skateboard shaped pedal. <laughs> <laughs> with a deck with the deck on it would be cool but anyways you can win one Sweetwater is giving you one uh they're gonna pull the drawing in seven days starting today so please check that out and uh we'll be talking about this again because i want to do something else really cool with these wah pedals and um and uh, i'll be doing a video with this wah and then we'll bring up the uh we'll talk about who gets to win that wah and maybe we'll have them do some kind of wah video and send it to you again not required to do to win just go ahead and click to uh win um that being said, let's start with some questions since it is a QA video. Uh, I try to hit some of the first questions of the day. And um, I think the first one of the day is not there. So I, I pardon me if it's not the first one, but it's the first one I see. Um, and it's from Randall. And he says, a Guild Starfire a DC Sydney Hollow electric guitar, cherry red, coming out soon. Thoughts? Um I have not tried any of the new Guild Starfire line. Now, I've played 
the Guild Starfire is from back in the day. Always very cool. Um, I've I've seen them at the NAMM show, you know, walking by the booth, but didn't put my hands on them. I kind of regret that. In fact, there's probably a lot of things I regret now about not putting my hands on at the NAMM show because, you know, <laughs> I, a lot of times I do that stuff and I go, oh, I'll check out something else later. Well, you know, it's a little tricky now. But uh, that being said, um, uh, I, I don't know much about them. I haven't tried them or anything, so I don't know. So, uh there yeah so on that note no help there but very cool i'll put a link to their website so at least we can all check them out together jose soto says hey phil i have a 2010 mexico strat with original pickups what brand would you recommend a humbucker bridge single mid and neck that is a great question and uh let's see uh i like i said that's it's tough because it's like you know what are your tastes what are you looking for um I, I really think right now, if I was going to put a humbucker single single in my current Strat, in my Mexican Strat, I would probably go with a DiMaggio PAF in the bridge and some injector injector pickups in the neck and middle. I think the injector is only neck and bridge, right? And they use something else. Oh, you know what? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I also like the, uh, is it the HS3s by DiMarcio that are like the Inve things? I'm on a kick right now with those and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the PAF. That's a great pickup. Um, that's a good combination. Of course, you know, there's always the JB as the most hated and loved pickup, I think, in history. Uh, <laughs> I like the JB, uh, a JB in the bridge, and then your choice of neck and middle pickups. Um, I am in the middle of testing pickups right now. So I'm trying to come to some great scenarios with that being said. Uh, it's hard to, the one thing I haven't got to is HSS. My um, Somnium guitar, I do not have modules for P90s or HSS yet. So those are the two sets of pickups I have not been trying. So that's why it's hard to give you a recommendation. But soon I will have those modules and soon I will test uh, the, cause that's what I'm curious of uh, humbuckers and single, single mixes. And that's one thing about that. The, the guitar, regardless of the videos, man, it's been really interesting trying all these combination of pickups. I have today alone, I was trying out, uh, eight different sets of single coil pickups and it was really interesting. I keep thinking I might just run a, a really horrible, I don't want to say horrible, but horrible camera, you know, just run a camera in the corner room while I'm doing this stuff. It's, it, maybe, I don't know why anybody would want, want to watch an hour footage of me just fumbling through these pickups with this guitar. Um, but I, I, there's no way I would edit it. It would just take too long. Um, somebody says, how about the Dr. Oz pickups? Yes. Well, I, you know, what is funny is, is, uh, that's the set I'm reaching over here. That's the set I was just playing in the guitar. This is them right here. And uh, they're still my favorite, but uh, this is a single, single, single set, single, single, single set. So I don't know. I haven't mixed a humbucker with them to see how they pair up. That's what I don't know. See what I'm saying? That's the trick. I have some humbuckers I like right now. I have some um, uh, single coils right now. I'm also just, why I said that, I was thinking about what's hum SS. No, for HSS right now, I'm, I'm still liking the DiMaggio's, but I'm going to be experimenting and we'll, just lets me know that that's maybe a good video to do. Okay. Uh, Bradley uh, Dingus says, Philip, is there a way to have a Nashville Tele have a reverse round, re reverse, reverse wound with a W, reverse wound, reverse, uh, oh, uh, reverse polarity uh, on the neck, on the neck bridge and middle neck middle. I think what you're asking me is, can you have a reverse round reverse polarity in the middle? This is a tough question because the answer is, yeah, you can, you have to buy a reverse round reverse polarity pickup and put it in the middle. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, you could reverse the wires, but it wouldn't be the same thing you could. Okay. Technically, technically, this is where it gets tricky on live shows. And I try to answer these questions, but I also want to start to do more disclaimers about stuff like this where I'm not visually showing you stuff. You could technically take the middle pickup in that guitar if it's not currently a re reverse wound 
pickup and uh, polarity. You could pull the, the the slugs, the magnet slugs out of it and flip them upside down and stick them back in and then take your uh, ground in hot wires and swap them. And that technically would work because you'd be running the signal the opposite way. And of course, now your uh, mass would be the opposite way. That That's an old trick a lot of people have done in the past, if that helps. Um, but again, I might get beat up for that a little bit because again, without actually having it in front of me, I don't know if I could be able to explain any better than that. All right, uh, let's do a couple of super chats. You guys went crazy with those already. William Spruce says, please discuss speaker cabinets. Okay. Uh, the, and broad considerations when picking one, which speaker brand size eight, 10 and 12. I actually have a, a boutique VVT with a 15. Oh, wow. Uh, thanks, Phil. I love your show. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, so speaker cabinets, speakers, let's talk speakers first about speaker sizes. I'm not a huge eight inch speaker fan uh, for guitar. Now for, I love a four, eight cabinet for bass. I pr pretty much played four, eight cabinets for my bass guitar. Most of my life, uh, my Ampeg four, eight, which is a weird four, eight that you don't see. Uh, anytime I, I used to play in bands. I used to, I, for a long time, I played four, eight cabinet on a 115. And then I slowly changed that to a four, eight, one twelve cabinet. I always liked it. It was just really punchy and, and really defined. So bass, yes. Guitar, not so much. Uh, tens. I love four tens. In fact, um, I'm a huge Basement 59 fan. Uh, I love that amp. I love the four tens in it. I think it rocks. I have a Vibralux by Fender. That's a 210. Obviously, I love the Princeton. It's got a 110. Um, one of my favorite amps. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's just like this is where you get stabbed by the internet. Uh, one of my favorite amps, not of all time, but let's, let's say top five amps of all time is the PV Classic 410. I really like that amp. I've always loved that amp. Um, Probably because it's like the Fender Bassman vibe with a 410 in size, but then it's got distortion and some reverb, and I always liked it. So 10s are cool. Um, but of course, like everybody, I mostly play 12s. I think more majority of us are going to play 12s. So uh, the question is, discuss speaker cabinets and consideration when picking uh, ones and speaker brand. So speaker brand... I don't think it really matters to me, uh, but there's speaker styles I like. And I go through phases. And when I say phases, not monthly, weekly, yearly, but I, I don't know, every five, 10 years, your ear changes. As you get older, your ear changes. As you damage your ears. Uh, and I wear earplugs and I don't have any hearing damage, but, you know, as you get older, your ears are wearing out and you get damaged. And so it just happens. So uh, I change. And as I've said many times, I'm a vintage 30 fan. Uh, a lot of my cabinets are vintage 30s. My Marshall 412 is a vintage 30s. Uh, majority of my amps have vintage 30s, but a lot of my fenders have Jensen's. I like the Italian Jensen's and the Fender amps. That's, that's, which is f great for me because they're stock. And I've modded, uh, well, I shouldn't say modded, but I've yanked almost all the speakers out of all my Fender amps and tried other speakers and uh, always came back with the Fender amps, always came back to the stock Jensen. I just found that it just did something for me. Um, the, uh, the uh, uh, now I'd say my new favorite new speaker right now is Creambacks. I got a Friedman cabinet with a cream back in it. I really, really liked it. So I put a cream back in my uh, Fender Supersonic uh, 22. And I really feel like that amp is, at first I was not digging it. And, uh, but you know, when you put it in there, like I have to take it apart, pull the chat out, all that to get the speaker out. So I left it in and believe it or not, for some reason, just slowly over time, just started taking over and really liking it. So that I ended up liking it so much that I've been messing with more cream backs and, uh, I have the neodymium, neodymium uh, cream back and the regular one. And I guess I like the stock one better, but I say, I guess like, I don't know. I, I really, I really don't notice. I think, I think it's mostly in my head that I'm hearing a difference. I'm sure there's an audible difference, but it's not like a bad versus good. It's just, does one sound the exact same? I don't, I don't know. Um, so like in the cream backs uh, on cabinets, obviously I use the Mojo Tone 212 that you see behind me. Uh, a lot to record with. I have a matching uh, Marshall uh, 212, the 2061. I have a 412 uh, 1960. I have uh, the Freeman 112. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because it's very important right now, that is it. I'm kidding. I got rid of that many cabinets. Um, 
So when I got the Mojo Tone, that was pretty much what I was after. I was after a cabinet that I could use all the time to get more consistency in audio and videos. Uh, and so I have the Mojo Tone. I, I like my Fender 2061 because it matches my 2061 head. It's a good cabinet. I have a 1964-12 because it's nice to have a 412. Not to mention, there's no reason to get rid of the 412 because it's worth nothing. <laughs> I bought it for like 350 new, new, but in perfect condition. And they're not worth anything. And I put vintage 30s in it on top of that. So it's it's worth keeping because they just have horrible resale values. And then the Freeman 112 cabinet. And I'm just going to my head right now. I'm looking around. I think that's it. That's the only cabinets I have. I really pared down the cabinets really, really a lot. So 212, a 412. Really, that's what I wanted. A 212, a 412, and a 112. And that's uh, what I was what I was doing. Uh, I told myself I'd get another Mojo Tone, Mojo Tone, either 112 or 212, probably 112, but I never pulled the trigger just because, um, I don't know, I got enough amps, <laughs> got enough cabinets. Uh, next question we have is Grumpy Mike. Hey, Grumpy Mike he says, I got my KYG gold shirt this week styling. So why not? That's awesome. Thank you so much for getting that. The gold top shirt is the, uh, it's got the Les Paul with gold tops. Uh, Justin, or Justin, Jason, uh, Mabe, um, uh, did that. He, uh, uh, it's Justin. I'm sorry, Justin. I'm just thinking in my head, Justin Mabe, uh, he designed that shirt. Uh, so, um, uh, it, it was his design. So I'm getting flustered because I almost forgot his name. Sorry, Justin. Justin, uh, anyways, uh, he designed the uh, gold top shirt. And then what happened was uh, I wanted one and then everybody saw it. And then I said, well, I feel bad if we didn't release it a little bit. So that was his idea for that shirt. And it's it's cool. A lot of people dig it for sure. Um, the uh, So I'm glad you got the shirt. You got to give me a picture, uh, Grumpy Mike. You got to send this one. I would love to, love to see it. If you don't want to post it in a video, just send me the picture and just say, don't post. And I won't post them. Uh, just sometimes it's cool to see what you guys come up with. So, and then a lot of times people just, if they don't want to be in the picture, they just find funny things to do with their shirts. That's cool too. I like it having a beginning. It's just cool to see stuff. Um, let's see. Funny, actually a funny story. I like to share funny stories, especially during live show. So I, 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 uh, uh, Jean at P Paul Reed Smith guitars got a, uh, one of the female shirts and, uh, what's funny was, when she got the shirt, she took a picture of it. She threw it on a rack in the factory. And she, it's, you've seen it in one of the videos. If you've seen all the videos or most videos, it's in one or two of the videos. So she put the picture on a rack and took a picture and sent it to me. And so I posted it. And it was funny because um, uh, Nathan, as you guys know, Nathan, uh, my buddy works at PRS. And he said, when he saw it, he said, oh, you photoshopped your, your shirt laying in our factory. And I'm like, no, Gene did that. So it was kind of just kind of illustrates how you can just take a picture of it without you in the picture and put it up there if you'd like. Um, uh, let's see. I'm going to say Lighten. Lighten says, did you see six string samurai yet? Samurai yet? I haven't. I haven't seen six string samurai. Um, I need to check that out. Is that what you, I, I haven't checked it out. I've heard of it. I'm familiar with it in the idea that I've heard about it. Um, but I know nothing about it. I will, I will check it out this afternoon when I have some downtime. I usually you try to relax the Friday afternoons after the live show. Sometimes it's a nice time to go check things like that out. Uh, Carlos says, lost 100 PDS uh, as of last week. I'm thinking he means pounds, I hope. Uh, get a guitar, right? Lost 100 pounds last week. Get a guitar. Want an Explorer. Gibson uh, 70s Explorer. Epi. Lizzie Hale. Or Duncan Whole lot of. Okay. I'm just making sure, Carlos, I understand what you're asking. He wants an Explorer, a Gibson 70s Explorer, or the Epiphone Lizzie Hale, and a Duncan whole lot of love humbucker uh, pickup, uh, and money is not an issue. Well, if money's not an issue, get the real Gibson. <laughs> the, the Lizzie Hale was awesome. It was a great guitar. Um, and, uh, I mean, I mean, it's a great guitar. I don't know... I mean, I can't say it's you have to buy a Gibson, but you said money is not a, an issue. If money's not an issue and you want a Gibson, buy a Gibson. I don't think you regret buying the things you really, really want if it's not a financial issue for you and you really want it. If you are going to be happy with the Lizzie Hale, get it. It was a great guitar. I got nothing bad to say about the one that they sent me. That one, of course, is is on its way back or it's going back soon. Um, uh, so, so, I mean, it's, uh, you know, 
I loved it, but it was just here to visit. Like a lot of the guitars that come here, if you guys notice, um, I do that for, I do it, I do it for personally for transparency, but a lot of times I, I know it's confusing for you guys. It'll say on the video uh, product provided, which is implied that I, I was given the product, but I couldn't say half the time. I don't know what the average is, but let's say 40% of the time, 30, 40% of the time, the product was provided, but I don't get to keep it. It has to go back. So I just, I just, I, to me, if I didn't buy it, I, whether they let me have it or it has to go back to me, that's what I want to disclose to you is that I didn't physically buy it. I call it the rapture. Um, when you review something, when companies send you something to review, I believe in my, you know, me personally, I believe that you can give an honest opinion about the product. Um, I, I have no problem doing that. I know a lot of channels that have no problem doing that. Um, whether I bought it or didn't buy it, uh, I would still be very kind in what I say. I'm not going to sit here and slam it the, to no end. So the way I would talk about the product really doesn't change. The only thing I really can't say, which is why I like my icons, um, the way I disclose my stuff with my icons is the one thing I can't tell you when a company sends me a product, whether to loan it to me or to give it to me for some kind of promotion, I can't tell you what it feels like to lose money for it. In other words, I, I call it the rapture. Like I said, if I had a thousand bucks in my wallet, I know what that is. I, I, you know, it's in your wallet, it's yours. And then you give it away or, you, you know, you exchange it for a product and they have a product. There is an emotional element that comes to most people, I believe, with the idea that I know what a thousand dollars is, but I don't know what a thousand dollars of joy is. In other words, is this guitar really going to make, you know, doing what it's supposed to do, which is giving you the, hopefully the joy of the money exchange. This is a weird thing to talk about, but I think it's important. Um, so sometimes that's what sucks. I can't really talk about that. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I notice a lot of times when I buy something and I do the review, a lot of times there's a, some discussion about the expense and how I feel about the expense. Um, I find a lot of channels, which is not a bad thing. Again, they'll empathize with people. They'll say, oh, it's, you know, if I, it's totally worth it. If I was going to buy it, I would feel this way. Um, they're probably right. I just don't do that. It's just not my thing. So on my, on my thing, if I didn't buy it, I don't discuss the feeling of what I think it's valued at. I know that kind of some people don't like that. Some people do like that. It's just, you know, keep in mind at the end of the day, uh, I'm staring at my own face in the camera, so I got to stare at myself and live with myself with what I'm saying and doing. So, all right. Uh, let's see. What else? Let's look at some main comments. Let's see. Uh, Jimmy wants to know, hey, Phil, is there a reason that acoustic guitar makers don't use locking tuners uh, as standard? Uh, can you recommend a set that doesn't need uh, re-drilling or retro to retrofit? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny to me. The first time I think I ever saw an acoustic guitar with locking keys was the Monty Montgomery by uh, Alvarez Aguirre. And uh, it had uh, Spurzels or Spurzels, whatever you want to say, uh, however you say it. Uh, and... Uh, I remember thinking like, that's a great idea. Uh, of course, if you guys saw, I did a Sharp Max where I put locking keys on my tailor. Um, I, I like locking keys. I don't know why acoustic guitar companies don't use locking keys. I used to believe that um, because it made sense. A lot of times they didn't do it because locking keys tend to be heavier. You're adding more mass to the key and uh, you're going to make the guitar top heavy. But now they make ultra light locking keys. And I mean, now, I mean the last 10, 15 years. So um, I don't know why they don't do it. I think it makes more sense to have a locking key for an acoustic. Maybe uh, I think obviously acoustics are about tr tradition and maybe traditionalists really don't like the idea of going to a locking key. It makes sense to me to put them on there. To answer your question, you should be able to buy either a uh, graph tech ratio tuning keys or hip shot tuning keys with either one of their adapter plates and not have to drill any holes or mar the instruments in any way. There, uh, so there you go. If that helps try that, that's the ones I recommend. I like those a lot and you shouldn't have to mar them. Although keep in mind, most acoustics are using some kind of standard tuning key and you could probably find the locking version of that style of key. So, uh, Okay, what else do we got? Uh, 
Hold on, hold on. Let me jump over because I'm like looking. There was comments and not questions. Like I said, you can have a comment too. If you put a question mark before a comment, I'll read it as well, just if it's something you want to talk about. Um, okay, we have... All right, Brad Hewitt says... Brad says, getting my impossible guitar. Oh, he I'm sure he means the Somnium. Uh, same orange setup as Telly and Strat with Lindy Fralin blue set soon from Mark. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for you. You know, I have. I feel like at this point, I was just thinking about this today when I was messing with it. I really, I really believe this. At this point, I can't say I'm out of the honeymoon era of the guitar because I've only had it for a couple months. But... At the tail end of the honeymoon era, I could honestly say if I could only key three guitars right now, it would definitely be my Strat. And I always say my Strat. It's either my green one or my, or my copper one. I flip on that all the time. So it would be that whatever da that day. But it would always be one of those two Strats. My Strat, my PRS Mira, and now that guitar for sure. For sure. Um, I play that guitar so much. In fact, today, that's the only guitar I was playing. And it wasn't because I'm swapping. And so, you know, it's not because what you think. I think you think I'm swapping pickups and just listening to pickups. No, I load in some pickups I like and I play it for hours. And then I, instead of swapping guitars like I normally do, I just swap the pickup cartridge. And I've kind of really, I really feel like I'm probably going to end up with about four or five tops uh, cartridges of pickups so like five sets of pickups that i really like and i'll probably just swap between those but man it's it's a really cool cool guitar so i'm glad you got it brad i'm excited for you um like i said i i really dig it i'm having a blast um like i said and i definitely think i i don't think i've ever as getting a new guitar i've never played a guitar this much i just playing it all the time um so, and right now, uh, the next video, I shouldn't say that. I hate saying this stuff because every time I say something on the live show, it ends up not happening. <laughs> so I'll just wait off on that. Uh, William Spruce says, Phil, uh, got a set of the Octave Doctor. Angels love them. Yes. Yes. They're good, right? Octave Doctor. You know, what's funny is when he contacted me, you know, a lot of companies reach out. A lot of companies, pickup guys uh, as a whole, are, are really tough because every pickup guy has the same speech. This has nothing to do with me being a reviewer on YouTube. Uh, when, when we would buy pickups from guys as a store owner, they say every pickup company's got a speech. It's always the same. Like, I figured out the magic. Everybody's always saying they figured out the magic. I've got the magic wire. I've got the magic winder. I've got a magic... <laughs> Right. I got um, and 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 here is what I've learned. And this is just my experience. And again, it's not a fact. It's my experience. It's their damn ears, man. It's everything, everything when it comes to something like a pickup. And you could say that about pickups are pedals for sure. Guitars, amps, of course, it's true with everything. But pickups specifically, I find that you can, I don't care who you are. I don't care what magic thing that you have for pickups. I don't care if it's special bobbins or the magnets that were blessed by the Pope or whatever it is you pulled out of your butt to talk about. Cause they all have something to say like that. Realistically, it's a magic ear. It's the ability to know when it sounds right. And that takes time not only to develop the ear. Some people just have a good ear, like getting good tones and stuff. They have a good ear, but Sometimes it's knowing when, when that's enough wines and what what's done right. And uh, Octave Doctor, he's got it, man. He's got it. Those pickups, he's got it. So I'm just telling you guys, uh, I, I, I you know you've seen this over the years. I, I really like Wiggins pickups. There's a few pickups I like. There's a few companies I like. I usually you know tell you guys it's a preference, but I'm telling you, uh, he's got a great ear and he's he's making a great pickup. So. That's what it is. And what I like about him is he doesn't really give you the whole magic wire, magic winder, magic Bob and speech. He just says, he, you know, he goes, I know how to do it. And he obviously did. And I really appreciate that, too. So there you go. <laughs> magic, the magic, <laughs> the magic sewing machine. All right. Um, let's see. John Rudy says, Hey, Phil, love the channel. Thank you, bud. I appreciate that. Just bought a line six JTV 59 from Sweetwater waiting to waiting. Oh, to reconcile 24 hours before opening. Ah, okay. 
Okay. Uh, what are, what are common problems with those guitars that I should look for when I unbox? Okay. So I've seen that. I, I recently have purchased a guitar from Sweetwater and, uh, and it was my, it's my first guitar I purchased from them, uh, since I got the telly and I wasn't unhappy and that was over a year ago. And so it, it in fact, I didn't like, I didn't just, you know, I didn't say like, I'm never going to buy a guitar from Sweetwater again, but let's just say I was probably never going to buy a sweet, a guitar from Sweetwater again. I, when I sent the guitar back, I got a bunch of equipment. I've since bought, uh, you know, my zoom recorders, microphones, uh, you know, processors, pedals, amplifiers. I've bought everything from Sweetwater and it's not had to do with Sweetwater. I've just kind of was burnt out on buying guitars online. Um, and having some bad experiences. So anyways, I got one from Sweetwater, very happy with it. It's a very, it's not inexpensive. It's just not an expensive guitar, but what's funny about this, and I will review it. I will, I will talk about it, but, um, it had the sign on it or the sticker, the notification do not open for 24 hours. So here's the thing about that, John. Um, I, I'm sure I know why they're doing that because obviously they, you know, you're, you want to make sure that, the guitar gets time to acclimate. In my experience, uh, it's not 24 hours. It, it's in, like I said, you want the guitar to, I, 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 I again, this is going to be weird. You know, if you ever bought a fish from the, <laughs> from the pet store, I told you it was going to be weird. And when you get it in the baggie, they tell you to take it and put the baggie in the fish tank and then let the water, you know what I mean? Get acclimated to each other's temperature. And then you pour it in. Um, I, I'm not saying it's the same, but it's kind of that same vibe with your guitar. You definitely want to make sure uh, that the box, and if it's in a case, here's what you want to do. You want to make sure the box is had time to acclimate to the room you're in, especially if it came from, you know, snow or extreme heat, you know, right? Because keep in mind, what you want to think about is not the temperature outside, although that's important. Think about the temperature of the truck it was just in, right? I mean, it was in a UPS truck. It, it, you know, the truck is either freezing or, or or FedEx or whatever. It's either freezing or super hot. So you want time for the uh, the uh, box to acclimate, then the case, then the guitar, and the case can really hold in that that temperature and that moisture content from wherever it came from or lack of moisture content. So 24 hours seems a bit excessive for me. I, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm not telling anybody not to do it. You should follow the rules. I'm just gonna tell you what I do, so that you're aware. I don't wait. I've never waited 24 hours uh, unless I know it's like a really crazy, like lacquer finished guitar. Maybe I'm a little sensitive about it. Um, for me personally, I will, but I will, I will tell you it's, I usually wait somewhere between five and eight hours. Like it's all day. I just wait all day. If it came in at three o'clock in the afternoon, maybe that night I'll open it up the next morning, but I don't wait full 24 hours. Uh, usually just think about it like anything, right? How long do you think it takes to acclimate to something? It takes hours. So there you go. So something like that, but I understand that. Um, things to look for, just to go ahead and just make sure you check the finish and stuff. The one thing about Sweetwater is, uh, is, is from my experience buying guitars from Sweetwater, I really appreciate that they post the 55 point inspection. I have not physically seen the 55 point inspection and I don't necessarily disbelieve them because they're a very credible company, but I don't actually think, you know what I mean? I don't know what actually they're actually doing. So what I'm saying is, is you need to be diligent too, because although Sweetwater is very reputable and I would recommend buying from them over a lot of the other big box stores, um, you know, especially the guitar center guys, like I, you know, I wouldn't buy from them online if I have a choice to buy from Sweetwater, I'll, I'll be honest. And, and I say that only because I, I buy from Sam Ash. I buy from American Music Supply. I buy from Sweetwater, I buy from Guitar Center as a guitar aficionado i buy from who has stuff who who has a deal who has it in stock i mean there's all kinds of variables of why you will buy something but if i can give business to sweetwater i will because like i said they do me they, they do a good job taking care of me in fact i can tell you right now i try to toggle between ams sweetwater and sam ash for some reason i like all three of those companies and that's why i do a lot of business with them but uh that being said uh i would do your own inspection go through the guitar and make sure the nut is cor cut correctly and um and then when i go through what i'm looking for is stuff that they should have caught so for instance like if if a couple days later this fret sprout i don't necessarily get upset i mean it needs to be addressed but i don't get upset because it's not something they could have actually caught unless it came in the box already like that and even then it could have happened in shipping all right let me go back to some non super chat pen questions these are the, um, <laughs> oh, I love this. 
This is a great question. I love it. Emil's got a great question because I, I, I love it. Here it is. Ready? What does it mean when a used relic guitar is mint? You know, what's funny is I see that actually a lot. I see, I've seen, I, I mean, I would, I, I would not laugh, but I've seen it so many times too on reverb, you know, excellent condition. <laughs> it's a beat up relic guitar. And you're like, yeah, how would you know? How would you know what was what dent was put by the factory and what was dent was put aftermarket? And nor should it probably matter. But more importantly, it's it's interesting. In fact, but what's more in interesting than that is what I've seen. And so, Emil, to answer your question is, what does it mean to be mint? Uh, nothing. I, th I think at this point, I think I, I think. It, uh, what I've seen with uh, relic guitars, especially like Road Worn by Fender, you'll notice that in my experience, they've they really keep their resale value because they look like, how would you know you're not getting it brand new? It looks like that when it's brand new. So a lot of times it's hard to devalue them because they you can't tell what's what anyone's done to it. But what's interesting about that question is something I've seen that I think is stranger, which is I've seen people... Uh, try to take instruments like maybe a made Mexico standard Stratocaster or Telecaster, an Ivan is. And what happens is obviously they have a guitar, has a chip or a ding or something in it, and then they relic it. And then they try to pass it off. It's like, oh, it's a relic model. And I, every time I see that, I kind of chuckle, right? And it looks horrible. So you guys know, please don't try and relic guitars um, <laughs> trying to save the value of them, especially these polyurethane and polyester finishes. They just do not relic well. And, um, <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Don't try it, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What does it mean? It means that they can say it's in perfect. Think of this. You could say brand new. I mean, you can't, but you could, cause how would anybody know? So unless you're not the original seller, but descri dis uh, uh, description wise, I mean, it looks identical to when it was new. So who knows what was added? All right. Um, we have AP says, literally, he's A dot P dot says, AP says, hey, Phil, according to Bank of America, this is going to go weird. The U.S. is about to enter the worst recession in modern U.S. history. Well, you know, Bank of America. Uh, what does this mean to guitar for guitar retailers, big discounts and Fender Gibson, lots of closures? So I'll tell you this. This is where I, this is not. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to isolate this question for a minute to, to a point that makes sense. Um, there are things that I, I, it's not that I don't want to talk about on the channel that sometimes I don't want to talk about certain stuff. That's not guitar related, but more importantly, I'm not going to speak about anything that I, I really can't add value to. So to recessions, the economy, the, the, uh, the, uh, virus coronavirus, I, I don't know anything. I know less than probably the average guy about that stuff. So I can't speak about any stuff. Everything would just be stuff I pull out of my, my, my head and my butt. And I don't think that's fair to do for you guys. The whole point of this uh, talk is to have discussions about guitar stuff, but hopefully lean on some experiences I've had and some, some things I've seen, maybe some things I I'm aware of. Um, and try to, you know, not that the, any answer I give is going to be the right answer, but at least it has some kind of basis in experience. That being said, the only thing I can specifically hit on your question that is worth talking about is guitar retailers and the the current market, and that's what's going to be important because we're everything else is conjecture. We're all guessing what the market is. Nobody knows. This has never happened before. This has never happened. And so here's what I do know, and back to like what I've said uh, before. And a reminder again, you know, these kind of ex these kind of events in our lives really do test the, the your character and who who you are right now is who you are don't don't tend to, because things are different or worse or better or strange that you're somehow a, you know a, be a different person than you are you should you are who you are right now this is what people remember you for so be the person that you think you should be right now um and uh, and uh, so that being said uh retailers retailers i tell you right now uh the hard thing is right now is retailers are closed. Where I live in Arizona, uh, non-essential stuff is shut down. So music retailers are one of those things, and that's tough because they're not they're not making money. So um, what's interesting about this is I was asking uh, the other day. So this was a good time to talk about this. The live show could be something we could use as a vehicle, as a tool to help small retailers. So what I'm going to tell you guys right now is all of you are places. So when I say places, literally you know, all over the world. Okay. So 
since the channel reaches all over the world, I'm letting you guys know if you have a retailer uh, that you love, a small retailer that you know is is uh, being affected by this right now, and they're selling online, uh, you can send that to the Ask Know Your Gear. Please don't send me a paragraph. I can't read it. It's just I'm right now with everybody being locked down. I'm actually getting more emails and stuff sent at me than ever before. And so, but if you put in the subject title, you know, small mom and pop retailer. So I know that this is the subject we're talking about. What I was thinking it'd be interesting is to maybe get a list of small retailers out there to, if you're out there buying online, if you're sitting at home and you're buying from the big box stores, maybe this is a good time to kind of spread some of that love and energy to the mom and pops because we need them to be around. They are really important. It's not just a thing that people say, like you got to support mom and pops. There's a reason why mom and pops support people's communities. Mom and pops do more than just, you know, uh, uh, you know, be, live in your area. They literally affect your area. So what I was going to say was you can buy online. If you're buying online, don't forget those mom and pops. Okay. Um, and uh, if I can do anything, give shout outs to some stores and stuff, uh, maybe we can use this. Or if somebody's got a better idea than that, I was, that's what I said. I was thinking about this the other day, how to brainstorming, how we can help um, some small companies, just like how some people are doing some charities for uh, the gigging musicians that are work right now. How could you know, if you're not, especially if your industry is not being affected by this right now, and maybe, you know, you're out there buying, you know, maybe let's make sure some of that money can go to something really a good cause. To, to be honest, if you're buying a pedal and you can help somebody, because a lot of times the big thing with mom and pops, and then I'll get off this, this tangent, is the one thing mom and pops don't have, and this is the main difference between them and the bigger corporations, is they don't have the nest egg of money that sometimes they need for situations like this. So my wife asked me a question, and, I'll, and it's, it tags onto this. She said, what would I do if we had the store? Because as you guys know, I, I, I closed the store. I stopped doing the store. I think it's like three years now, two years now, two or three years. I think three years, I think. Um, so three years. And... Uh, I said, we, well, obviously we'd be closed. I said, I think we'd probably be sadly enough just there every day listing everything online. And that's what you would have to do. You, you, you know, I was through a recession with my business. The recession was really bad. If you guys recall. And, um, whoo, it, uh, it was a tough recession, man, but we made it through and we came out the other end and we were fine. Uh, but what happens is in a recession, all, uh, when our back to this industry, I can only tell you the one thing that I remember from last recession you have to be willing to work. Don't be afraid of work. Work a little bit more. I'm already experiencing it in my environment right now. I'm working more. Work more, going to make the same or less. This too shall pass. So that being said. All right, let's get back to guitar stuff. That was, but thank you for a, the question, AP. Like I said, hopefully it'll give somebody insights and maybe we'll end up with some some cool stuff out of this. Again, I will not only want to keep this channel positive, but, but I want to keep us focused on things we can do. Uh, we have a great community here. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep it. So let's keep it, uh, let's keep it positive. Let's keep it good. Mr. T dares, Mr. T dares. I, like I get it. Cause like Mr. T used to say, I dare you. Okay. Seven string arch chops. Okay. I have a seven string custom strat and I want an arch top that is not 20 grand. Okay. Is there any builder that will make one for 5K or less names. That's a great question. Uh, I remember, did ben, Benedetto did a seven string arch top, but it was crazy expensive as well too. Um, they're out there. Uh, you know, uh, Ibanez did seven string arch tops a few years back and they didn't do well. So you guys know seven string guitars, when Steve I made the seven string famous uh, with the, you know, the, the universe. And that's the important thing. He made it famous. You know, he didn't design it. They didn't do anything. That, it was already existed before. Uh, a couple years before that, Maestro and Fender made a seven-string Strat-style guitar. I want to say in 1984, something like that. You can look on, like, Wikipedia. Somewhere out there, that's information out there. Um, but more importantly, before that, years and years, decades before that, jazz guys would play seven-string arch tops. Um, and I know for, I, I want to say, within the last five or six years uh, ago, within that period... Uh, Ivan is, was making limited runs of, or not limited, but they had them seven string jazz guitars. So I would say that there's seven string jazz guitars out there. You just got to search for them. You, they're not new. They're used. I don't know anybody who's currently making a seven string jazz box, new affordable, but, uh, there was ones out there. I don't think Washburn did any, and I've never seen, uh, Epiphone do any, but I know seven, uh, Ibanez did some. 
So they might be a little pricey now for what they are because they tend to hold value because they don't make a lot of them, but still be far less than what you're thinking about spending for any of the crazy high-end builders because um, those are going to be pricey. Uh, Steve Dowler says, any thoughts on the Behringer CS400 compressor? Not, play, not paying those big bucks. Thanks, Phil. Uh, great show and channel. Uh, Sideman LZ. Okay. Uh, thoughts on the Behringer CS400 compressor? Man, I don't even know what that is. Let me look. Why can't I? How weird. Hold on a second. I am not super familiar with Behringer products. As you guys know, I reviewed one, and it was because you guys were... Okay, so it's the basic uh, inbox compressor. I think... I've never watched it, but I know everybody said it was great. I didn't get a chance to see it. It's just time restrictions. I know Josh from JHS Pedals did a video about all the Behringer pedals. Um, and uh, here, here's my thoughts on this. It has nothing to do with, as we've talked about in the past, about my wife not being a fan of Behringer product. And, of course, uh, Behringer as a, com a company is not 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 a good company <laughs> you know what i mean they've done some weird stuff but uh and i know they own tc and i like tc side now and so you know so that you know i don't know my point is uh behringer pedals these these pedals i'll share with you what we're talking about hold on look at that it's only gonna take an hour to share this is the pedal uh is this it? It says Behringer compressor sustainer 500 whatever blah blah. Is this the model? I'm going to assume it is because again, like I said, it's saying B E C S yeah C S 400. Um, I don't know anything about it. I've never tried it, so as far as I know, it could be cool. You know what I mean? Um, but it's 30 bucks, so I think if you're doing it for the budget purposes of 30 bucks, the only thing I would tell you is uh, that for 30 bucks you can buy some really cool used compressors as well. The only thing about it that I, I only thing about Behringer pedals as a whole that I will say is their noise floor is loud. They were hissy. Uh, all of them were like kind of noisy. Um, not in a huge horrible way. Not anything that would make me, you know, get upset. But, you know, you understand, like, I've never played one and thought, man, is everyone else just screwing me because these things are so amazing for the price? I always feel like everyone I've tried, it was like, yeah, this is good. It's a good price. You know, nothing to complain about for the price. So same thing, 30 bucks. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, but if anyone else has any opinions about it, again, I would rather rely on, I really like to rely on stuff I've tried. I've tried so much stuff. Just that's just, you know, that's a blind spot for me. So yeah, see, Michael says JHS pedal maker. Josh says the Behringer pedals are legit. Again, they're the great circuits. I think he's I think he's dead right. Obviously, um, but like I said, also don't forget uh, the uh, don't forget there's used pedals in that price point. And then Dylan just said same thing. He noticed that they're hissy too. Like I said, my personal experience with Behringer pedals, those pedals, is. Not that they're bad sounding. It's just that for some reason, a lot of them had like a hiss or a noise floor. And that's not even inherent with them. It's inherent with a lot of inexpensive uh, pedals. They get a high hissier noise floor, especially compressors. So, and it depends on your rig too. Sometimes your rigs can accent or help that problem get worse or make the problem better. So just something to think about. Ah, James uh, says Eastman Guitars does a seven string arch top. Well, there you go. Although I would imagine it's not going to be inexpensive, but it won't probably be that crazy, you know, 20 grand. <laughs> uh, and then D Mitchell says 30 bucks. Not bad. I have three Behringer pedals. Then it's a good for the price. I would say that's see, I love that saying good for the price. I think, I think that's a realistic, honest way to say something like that. Uh, Joey O pedals, uh, you know, Harley Benton guitar, same thing. When people say like a Harley Benton guitar for 293 and you know, you, you show the guitar and you play it and you go, man, you can't beat that for the price. It's great. But I never really play that stuff and go, whoa, you know, this is like a $5,000 thing and it's 30 bucks. I don't think it's that crazy. So there's very few cases where that becomes accurately, you know, kind of a thing you could state, but, um, but yeah. Oh, another suggestion to you too. If you're, if you're getting a compression, the one thing about, comp comp there's two adages or two thoughts of, uh, that you should be aware of, right? Is 
when you're getting into a pedal or a product for the first time, sometimes the logic is don't spend a lot of money because you don't know yet. But then what happens is the other adage says that if you don't spend a good amount of money, not saying you spend a lot of money, but if you cheapen out a little bit, then you're you're not going to have a good experience. So you're, it's not going to be great. What I will tell you about compressors is, is that I, I, I've definitely owned a ton of them. I still only currently, I own a bunch of them and I'm very picky about compressors. And what I will tell you is, you know, a lot of people do not like compressors and my experience has been because they have not found the right one. Because when you find a good compressor, it's like, it's a magical thing to have for most players, for most. Oh yeah, you know what, Daryl made a good point. Uh, thank you. He says, Behringer delay is noisy, but his Donner pedals are, are pretty good. I, I remember the Donner pedals being quieter. Um, and more makes uh, a pedal too, and again, quieter. I would look at those as well. Um, and then I think if I recall, didn't Josh from JHS talk about the fact that the, uh, the, the new TC pedals are uh, rebranded Behringer pedals, but better housings and a little bit refined. That would be something I would look at too, because those are a lot expensive and 30 bucks used all day long or something like that. Uh, Hanoverist says, can you please discuss the merits and downfalls of recording with phone digital recorders and, or an interface? Mm, that's a good question. Now, I don't know in reference to what you mean. Do you mean like making video content or do you mean recording like your audio recordings? Um, what I will tell you is this, and I say this over and over again, and I please, I, I kind of pound this into people. When you're, uh, whenever you're on the go, your phone is amazing. The phone is an amazing product, okay? The things that make your phone not so great really don't pertain to things on the internet. What I mean by that is the things like the, the uh, you know, your screen rate and all that stuff, that, that stuff doesn't matter because the internet's gonna compress that stuff. So what I'm saying is, is um, downfalls of recording with the phone versus digital recorders and interfaces. Um, it's not a downfall. What I will tell you is though, is I've gone now this giant circle when it comes to stuff. And when I started making my videos, as I, I've told many of you, my very first videos until I had 100,000 subscribers, every video was done with my phone every single one. And uh, I, it was the same phone. I have a droid phone or Samsung, right? This is, I don't even know what model this is. It's probably two models ago um, because I hate getting new phones. So uh, this is the, uh, this is the one I had, but also I had the model before this for a lot of the, a lot of the videos. So literally hundred thousand subscribers off the phone. Here's why, because I, when I was making videos, I didn't know how to make videos. I didn't, uh, I wasn't a, I had no intention of doing YouTube. I had no intention of doing this. I was making a few videos and uh, I was doing it to make it easy. And then what happened was I slowly learned to buy the devices for my phone. So for instance, I have the shotgun mic. I got that, uh, which is great. You can buy a shotgun mic, plug in your phone, whether you have an Apple phone, uh, an iPhone or a droid, you can do that. Then I got a lapel interface. In fact, here's one right here uh, like this. This is a Rode lapel mic. And you can see it's got the, the, uh, the special cable for your phone. See? At that and uh, you can plug that in your phone and and uh then uh so i would do that stuff and i would plug in interfaces and then i learned that you can take things like zoom recorders like the zoom h5 plug all your audio into that and then send the signal to your phone so your video is coming to your phone and your audio comes off that and it was really really good and i got a lot done and i was really happy with it and then i decided to switch to to a computer and a phone, our computer and cameras and up the game like that way. And I've really gone this full circle and I got the, I started getting the rig really elaborate. But what I learned is, and this is what I'm telling you guys, is that, um, you know, when you're making a lot of content, you're gonna find that the more time you spend making the content, this is what kills a lot of people, whether you're making music or you're making video. If you spend forever making something and it doesn't land, in other words, people don't ex get excited about it, it's really deflating. You know, when I make a video, when I make a video and I spend four days making it and it basically makes $17 and no one seemed to care about it, it emotionally does not feel good. Now, on the sad note, I, or side note, not a sad note, on a side note, I've done videos where I've literally talked into a, a, a camera for five minutes and then it got, you know, half a million views and I'm like, wow. And it was like took off. So the point is, is that um, uh, it's not that one has, it's not downfalls of either, it's just what's appropriate. So what I've learned to do is lighten my load now. So on my phone, what I use, I just have it all here actually. Um, I have one of these. This is what I use for my phone. Some use a gimbal, you can use a gimbal, but there's a reason why I use this unit. 
This is a, um, you can find this, I'll put a link, I guess, to Amazon. This is the unit I use, this holds my phone. Why is that important? Well, it's because it has this cool adapter on the top. Okay. And now I can mount uh, like my Zoom H5 or H6 on top of this. I can put my shotgun mic on here. Um, I can mount my wireless unit onto this. Literally, this is a portable rig and everything would plug in my phone. So everything that you see when I go to the NAM show, when I do those NAM videos, and my NAM videos do as well as anybody's NAM videos, and they're bringing these giant cameras and tripods and all this stuff, and I'm literally walking the show with my phone and a nice audio rig. And, uh, and a lot of times at the NAM show, I will film with my phone and then go out in the lobby and hook up the, the lapel mic or just a microphone in my phone and do the audio overlay. And uh, so portable rig, a phone is great. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, downfalls of your phone? Well, I mean, you know, it's not a perfect device. So, I mean, it's nice to have better interfaces and stuff like that. Uh, digital recorders are nice. But again, the more things you add to the, your, the more problems you're going to have. The way I do my videos now, when you see the review videos now, I do have a lot of multi tracks going on. I do have a lot of stuff going on. It gets a little cumbersome on the editing, um, which is why I use Final Cut Pro now. I, I really don't see, some people say, you know, nicer things about the videos quality wise, but, uh, Actual product views, like uh, the, I don't want to say, how do we, not production. I want to say the output, the results. That's what I want to say. The results is the same. <laughs> so, but use, use what you have and then make the best you can with it. And, uh, and then keep learning as you go. And that's what I had to do. So, and I'm not there yet. So I'm not there. I'm not the one you should be. I can't give you advice on how to make a good video. I can only tell you how I was making the videos I was doing before until the videos now, and you can see the growth there. Um, Jeremy says, tips for certain notes ringing much louder than others. I have a telly with the third fret on the high E and the 15th on the B string that rings super loud and ice pick ears. That's, that's an interesting problem um, that you have. Hmm. And without seeing it or hearing it, I don't know what would cause that. Um, sometimes s notes being dead makes sense, but ringing louder is very strange. It could be, again, I can only shoot guesses without seeing it. Uh, I'm going to shoot a guess just for fun because I'm curious, Jeremy. You could give it a try. Um, it could be your position of your pickups. What I would do is, for fun, measure your pickups from the top of the poles to the bottom of the strings, okay? Well, we actually back up. See again, this is the problems with doing the live shows. Is like it's it's I got I'm doing this as we go. So it's you need to fret the the highest fret on the guitar. So if you have a 21 fret or a 22 fret, fret that. Okay. Um so you fret the fret that once you fret that on your uh, string, then measure the height of the top of the pole piece to the bottom of the string on your pickup, and then write that down so you know where you're at. And then all I would do is lower your pickup and then try the experiment of playing those notes and see if the problem goes away and or changes. And it might, might be something caused with the pickup. It's very, it's very likely that's one step. And again, something like that. Um, it's really like a, you have a, you have a, you have a series of steps, but I would start there to see if maybe the pickup isn't causing some kind of crazy thing. And again, there could be a ton of other things too. That's just my first thought for the first step. Um, what else? Oh, Evan's got a point too. Do they ring loud when they're not plugged in? That's a little tough because I don't know if that's a good question. He should try it. You should try it like a, a, what Evan's suggesting. Try it without it plugged in. But my guess is that it's not ringing louder. What my guess is that whatever's happening, they're doing something. I'm, I'm not even saying it's caused by the pickup. I'm just saying maybe the pickup's even picking it up. But start by adjusting the pickups, not to solve it, but to see if that's changing it. Quentin James says, just don't play those notes. That could be the best. We could be the best tech video ever. <laughs> Phil, my guitar is out of tune when I play it. Then don't play it. <laughs> Quentin, you are you are a master, sir. Um, okay, let's see. Um, what else do we got to talk about? We're almost at the, uh, the one-hour mark. Like I said, I'm going to cut us off at one hour. And... Uh, 
Anything else before I go? If there's another super chat, let me grab that. If you're going to, uh, I'm going to read the super chats right now. Please don't do any super chats right now because I'm not going to read any as of uh, the right this exact minute. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the ones that I have before. We have a few. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Jacob says suggestions for a Vox AC30 in a box pedal. Um, I have the combo drive by boss. That's a horrible one to suggest, right? But I did a video of it and I really like that pedal. There are probably much better ones on the market, but that's one I have and one I like. So something to think about that. The combo drive is nice for that kind of, that kind of vibe and tone. Um, and then, you know, there's a ton of them out there that do it as well, but that's the one I like. Jack Tang just did a super chat for no reason. Thank you, Jack. John says, I want locking tuners on my SG. Stu Mac has three made by Cluson, okay, that look uh, traditional. Are there any good? What is the difference between the three? Um, you know, I don't know. There's three different ones made by Cluson that fit the traditional? So... I will tell you, let's just back up. Let me start with it with easy. If you have Cluson style tuning keys on your SG, what and you want to go locking keys, the ones I like are Godo. Those are my favorite right now. And I say that right now because it's important because you know these videos last you know longer than just you know weeks. They go months and years old. Um, as of this date, because uh, what happens is tuning keys that you like, just like all products, you like them, and then over time they're you know they change or they're not the same. Right now, my favorite three tuning keys, without a doubt, is Godo, uh, Graf, GrafTech Ratio Tuning Keys, and HipShot. Those are my free, three favorite ones. I'm having great success. I, those are the three I'm personally buying and putting on my personal guitars right now. Uh, Godo Tuning Keys, Cluson style. I really like them. And what I'm putting on my guitars that have that Cluson style tuning key. Uh, Ryan says, hi, Phil. Was the Thin9 Thin Thin Nine 594 headstock heavy? Uh, so I played one at the NAMM show and I don't remember it being heavy. I remember it being like the, the one, I, you know, all the other ones I have the thin line. I don't have the thin line. Listen, I have the S2594 non thin line and, uh, it's not headstock heavy. Uh, I would imagine cause the headstock's not very big. It's not very heavy unless the guitar is super light. So here's what I'm telling you, Ryan, if the, uh, guitar is too light, then you have a chance of it being headstock heavy. My guess is too light is anything under seven pounds, maybe six under six and a half pounds. Then you're probably six and a half is probably the cutoff. Okay. And the reason I say that is because my Mira is uh, 24 frets and it is six and a half pounds and it's not headstock heavy. So I would imagine you have to get lighter than that for the headstock on a PRS to get heavy, especially with the tuning keys they're using. They're using those light Cluson style tuning keys as well. Waterford Giant, hey Waterford, says, thanks for giving us something to look forward to on Friday. Stay safe. Hey man, it's, you know what's cool? I'm glad you guys enjoy the hanging out. I'm glad we get to do this every week. It's really cool, especially right now. So what's funny is that everybody's talking about this uh, self-quarantining and I'm like, this is like my weekly, this is what it's normally like for me. Think, think about this. Before this all started, I had found out, I was thinking about this, had nothing to do with this. I went five days without actually going outside. That just happened right before all this started. And I remember like going, I don't think I've been physically outside of the house for five days. Like not even, not even in the backyard, the front yard, nowhere, <laughs> just not outside the house for five days. So I, I think I, I was preparing for self-quarantining. Uh, the Santa Cruz, Mark, wow. The Santa Cruz, Marquis and... Queensberry. Oh, a Marquis of Queens. Jeez, this has got to mean something, right? Santa Cruz Marquis of Queensberry uh, is a long name and it's got to mean something. He says, I want to get into trading guitars, but I don't know how to start and I work and I work a, a low end job. Ah, okay. How do you manage when you started getting into guitars? So, uh, well, I, th this I understand. So trading guitars, uh, there's Craigslist, but Craigslist sometimes is enough to make you nuts. Um, what I found is also, also with Facebook and in, not Instagram, but Facebook in your, in your ways that you socialize with your immediate friends, that's sometimes the best way to start the trading. 
trading is definitely a, and I shouldn't say it is, it can be a very cutthroat, horrible thing. Okay. Let's be very clear on that. Uh, a lot of people are not going to have the same attitude about trading as you. Okay. There, some people are not looking for the win-win. Some people are looking for the, you just got effed. You know what I mean? And that's a reality of that. So what I'm saying about that is, is that when you're not very educated, when you're not informed about the products and stuff that you're dealing with, uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of crazy people out there that will take advantage of you. So I tell you that almost not so much to scare you, but to tell you that, you know, it's out there. Uh, it's, it's got people who do this for a living that know what they're doing, get screwed a half a dozen times a year. That's once every two months. That's a, if you talk to any professional guitar, uh, tr uh retailer, right. And used market, it happens all the time. Okay. So what I'm telling you is the best advice is to try to start trading with people, you know, your friends, people that you know through your friend network, okay? Um, the only caveat to that is you understand for some reason, I don't know what this is, but some people will vouch for people they don't know. So what I mean by that is this is why I'm giving you a piece of advice. Sometimes your friend will be like, hey, my buddy, Lou, he'll, he'll, he's a great guy, go trade with him. And then you go trade with him and you have a horrible experience and you tell your friend, you're like, that guy was a jerk. And he's like, yeah, I didn't know him. <laughs> <laughs> I had that experience once uh, with an employee. I hired an employee because of a friend's recommendation and the employee was the worst employee of all time. And eventually I had to, I had to fire the employee. And it was such a horrible experience. And I remember asking my friend afterwards, I said, man, you know, I, and I came at it with a very kind thing to say, which is, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, he, he let you down as well. And then my friend without even missing beats, like, well, I didn't really even know him. He just needed a job and he, and he mentioned it to me. So I thought I'd tell you about him. And I'm like, well, I literally put my guard down because you were recommending him. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So that being said, uh, training is a great idea. It's a great way to, to, to move product, uh, you know, and get into better gear, especially when you're, uh, you know, your, your, your money is restricted because that's, you know, Hey, you know, that's just the reality of it. Um, and, uh, but I would start with doing it that way. Start with some people, you know, like I said, reach out to friends, try to trade. You know what I mean? That's the best way. Okay. Uh, Raymond says for, he's doing a super chatter for hand sanitizer. Stay safe. Hit the thumbs up guys. Yeah. If you guys want to hit the thumbs up, YouTube seems to care about thumbs ups or something. <laughs> so I'd appreciate it if you do that. Really, really anything. You, it's a free way to help the channel. Think about that. It costs you nothing helps the channel. Uh, it's, it's, it's great. I appreciate that. Thank you, Raymond for, uh, for, uh, doing a super chat to remind everybody about that. Um, and, um, uh, Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, you know, make sure you, when you guys are keeping the economy going, buying stuff online, make sure you're wiping stuff down too. Okay. Uh, BK, and I'm just getting through these so we can end up. BK says, I, uh, oh. Oh, okay. No, thanks, BK. That was cool of you. BK says, uh, he was saying, I, I don't have to read this, but uh, I definitely want to. It says, uh, shout out to Dobie Doss. Uh, he's streaming live music every day of the quarantine, uh, help keeping our sanity. Cheers. I watched a couple of Dobie Doss's. I got to stream his live stuff. Absolutely, guys. Uh, I'll put a link to that if you guys know Dobie Doss. Dobie Doss is it's a great idea. I love this idea. So Dobie Doss was, was the first person I saw do it. I'm sure a ton of other people are doing it as well. I've seen more and more of it. Uh, he's like, hey, he's not gigging so he's gigging for you he's putting on live shows for you guys you guys get to watch man that's great um er webster says i have a pv rage uh, 158 i inherited uh from a relative that was my first real amp bam right there that was like uh, when i got the pv rage um uh, uh 158 i don't know if it's a 158 or it's a it's a it's like 15 watts eight inch speaker that's probably what 158 means i could be wrong just guessing um Anyways, I loved it. He says, sounds bad. <laughs> you know, not when you're 16. <laughs> when you're 16 and you have $103 cash and the store is willing to do tax out the door. <laughs> it, it was like, it was like I bought a Marshall stack to have distortion was like a, just pushing that button was like, I was like, it was like heaven. <laughs> it was like heaven. Um, up until that amp, so, you know, and I'm, I, I said I wouldn't go long and now I'm going long. Up until that amp, 
my other amp, my CMC amp, which was a six inch speaker with only treble, bass, and, and, and volume, had three knobs, had two inputs. And I used to have to invite my friend over. And because I figured out that if we both plugged our guitars into the inputs and I cranked the volume on 10, I'd get distortion, but only if he was there to play with me because you needed to overload the amp. So I could only get distortion if he'd come over. So sometimes I'd be like, come over and let's jam. And he's like, I don't feel like it. I would get so upset. I'd be like, you got to, you got to, because it's the only way I could get distortion. So when I got that uh, Rage, uh, it was... Uh, it's pretty amazing. So anyway, so it sounds bad. Yeah, I'm sure it does. My memory is a little old with it. Uh, but maybe the speaker is an issue. Uh, what a speaker should I put it in? Don't, man. You you know what sad is? Don't, don't, you know, you know the adage, don't put good money after bad. Don't put a new speaker in that unless you can get a speaker for free. Uh, that amp has probably no value. You know, any, any value. It, you can buy, you know what I mean? For a decent speaker, you can buy a decent amp in this market you can buy a little practice amp for 30 40 bucks no problem and that's better than that so don't that would be my best uh, advice chuck m music says hey phil i had an epiphone oh sorry i had an employee from guitar center who i bought a bunch of gear from called me and said he is working from home i could call him with orders i must i must be a real addict that's <laughs> you know what uh, that's, that's, that is kind of like the attitude that I like though. Uh, you know, this is what we gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. That's what I said. It's, uh, so yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's figuring out a way to make some money <laughs> and yeah, you're, you're an addict, but that's okay. That's why we're all hanging out here. Hopefully it helps us make better decisions about what we're doing. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm going to try the name. It's per. Prashanta? Prashanta. I'm saying it wrong, and I know, and I apologize. He says, uh, I've been entertained and learned so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, and uh, next time, uh, if you just put the phonetics of the name, that'll help me. Maybe I'll look it up later, too, because I'm, I'm curious. That's a beautiful, spelled out, beautifully name. Uh, Hannah Gunson. Hey, Hannah. Haven't heard from you in a while, man. It's good. I hope you're doing great. He says, buy a Corona. Yes, buy a Corona. They, uh, they, uh, I'm a, I'm a, uh, Tecate guy though. If I, if I do Mexican beer, it's Tecate. Now Dos Equis is there too, by the way, but I like Tecate. Uh, I don't know why. Um, oh, I know why I can tell you why I can tell you why I drink Tecate because when I went to Mexico, uh, and I was there for a, a couple weeks, um, they told me that only the gringos drink Corona. <laughs> Uh, and they were telling me about how Corona is actually owned by an American company now. And Tecate was the real thing. Cause it comes from like a well in Mexico. And so I drink Tecate, you know, right. Um, so that's why I drink Tecate. And there you go. It's could Who knows? Who knows? I could be totally wrong. That's what they told me though. They, uh, okay. So, uh, Mick Park says, Hey, Phil need a noise gate. Any recommendations? Um, I, everybody really likes the ISP decimator. It's a pretty hard pedal to not like. Um, it's really cool. I use the boss NS three, um, for no reason that I just, I have a boss collection of pedals and it works fine. I like it. Uh, I would, I can't tell you, I like the decimator better. I can tell you though, that everyone I know does. <laughs> so I, I just don't use a noise gate very often. And when I do, I, I usually just want to grab it. But the decimator is definitely the go-to pedal for that. CS says, hey, Phil, uh, I got a PRS S2 Custom 24 and put PRS Artist pickups in it. Okay. Got them used in a trade. But what PRS, but what PRS would they have come out of? They sound great. Oh, I don't know. Um, well, I would imagine they would come out of an artist package P artist package PRS, but, uh, that's something I can ask Nathan and he might know. And then I can, uh, I can answer that next week. That's something I can post next week if that helps. Um, because like last week, uh, Bob had a question about finishes on, on, uh, guitars. And I reached out to Nathan and he was, uh, kind enough to get, uh, 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 Matt Ariza, Ariza, sorry, Matt Ariza. Uh, if you guys know from, you know, he's the guy who does finish work for PRS. He's Ariza Verde finish is named after him and the Blue Mateo is named after him. He was nice enough to answer Bob's question. Thank you again, Matt. That was awesome of you. And thank you, Nathan, for, for asking. Uh, and then last one is uh, John says, 
Phil, what is the best attenuator for a Marshall 100 watt head? Just want to use it for volume reduction. So I, I again, I'm going to go with the what everybody else likes and then what I like. Everybody likes the Ox. Everybody likes the Waza Craft Boss one uh, and then two note stuff. That's like, it seems like that's what everybody does. I still use, I'm looking at right now, my Rivera Rock Crusher. Rock Crusher. Um, I did the Rivera Rock Crusher against the the, the uh, Behringer attenuator. I think for the money, the Behringer attenuator is a good thing if you're looking at an uh, economic attenuator. But if you have a 100 watt Marshall head and you're really trying to make sure it's safe, uh, this is why uh, there's a reason why I use the Rivera Rock Crusher because I trust that thing more than anything. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't have to go far and look at how Rivera builds stuff to not understand that guy's really crazy about making sure stuff is really built well. That stuff is built so well. I mean, I feel like I could drop an atom bomb on it and it'll be fine. In fact, your whole amp, the whole thing, like you could drop, it's just, it's amazing. So I really, really, really strongly uh, recommend his stuff for that reason. Cause of my, cause of that stuff I've done, I've done. I've done horrible things. I'm looking at it right now. I've done horrible things to that thing. And it's just like brand new. It's perfect. So, so, um, ah, somebody did mention that Corona is owned by Budweiser basically. Okay. Tim did a super chat. <laughs> Here's what it is for 25 bucks, I guess. Uh, thank you, man. That's crazy, but I appreciate it. it. says, hi, Phil. Would you happen to know where my trust rod cover went? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that is um <laughs> i have that i have that problem um it's so such a problem for me that uh losing truss rod covers i take all the truss rod cover first thing i do it's oh it's just, it's the worst thing i don't know why it's like it's kind of like when you hear that a car mechanic you know his car ha it does has you know it doesn't run right right the worst thing I got to tell you guys is that for some reason I take all the truss rod covers and all of the back plates off my tremolo off my guitars, all of them. And then I lose them. <laughs> I don't know why I, I stick them in a drawer. I have a drawer. I still, even in the drawer, I lose them. I don't know what it is. I've just been consistently bad about this. And now not one, but two, manufacturers who, by the way, I, these are my guitars that I bought, but I understand why they're doing it, have reached out to me and said very politely, like, hey, I saw the video with a with our blah, blah guitar or our blah, blah guitar was in the background. If you need a truss rod cover, we'll send you one. <laughs> and then I have to every time say, uh, yeah, no, I have it. <laughs> just, I took it off on purpose and now I can't figure out where I put it because I like to just leave them off because I don't know. Uh, I just if I have to get to the truss rod or bet to the change the strings of the guitar, I don't want to deal with that. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and then Haley, uh, Haley says, uh, bought the Ruck Crusher on Phil's recommendation. Love it. Also have the Waza. Oh yeah. It's a T T A E different tools for different things. Again, I, I, I thank you perfectly. The other thing about the, you know what it is? Oh, I should point this out too. Thank, uh, thank you so much uh Haley. great great comment because you just made me remember something john on the rock crusher the other thing i love about it is you don't plug it in it's just nothing that's what i like about it no plug no nothing the rock crusher doesn't need anything it's just you plug speaker jack into it speaker jack out to your cabinet that's it so i love it because it's so just you know i don't have to worry about it plugged in i don't have to worry about turning on anything i don't have to worry about doing anything uh not that you have to turn on those other devices to get an attenuate but you understand what i'm saying um, and, uh, you know, there you go. So, all right. On that note, we're going to call it. We went over anyways, but hopefully we went over less, uh, than we normally would. So we can free up the internet for everybody. And then on a side, side note, Reggie did a, a, a super chat for the cruise. Oh, for the cause. Good. Cause I was going to say, we're not going on a cruise. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And uh, I was thinking, I wanted to skip this week on purpose. I didn't want to burn you out. But next week, I'm thinking, what do you guys think? I think a Wednesday show and a Friday show again, two shows next week. Be cool to hang out and do our, our thing. Uh, I'll definitely be up for that, guys. Uh, look for uh, the videos, uh, the new pickup videos and the other videos I have coming out. And uh, as always, I want to take a second and thank the patrons for supporting the live show. Um, because without them we wouldn't have the ability to do this because they sponsor this. Plus all the super chats, all this stuff, you guys, it's great. Like I said, 
it's a it's cool that this channel is uh, supported propped up by you guys watching it thumbs ups subscribing you know buying the merch i mean it's it's literally like it's like it's it's how this happens man i appreciate it uh and as always i want to thank you guys so much hold on a second before we go and that's what i'm looking for i have a special thing i want to thank some people first i want to thank jeff house justin mabe and and jackery Rowe, and uh then i want to thank as my next screen comes up, Alasdar, McLeod, Anthony Desposito, Bob Crosley, Bob Crosley, Muse guitarist, Brian S., Bruce Collins. By the way, Brian S., check out Live Wires, the live show every Wednesday. Uh, Chief Squatch, Chris at the Guitar Pit, check out his channel. Very cool channel as well. Craig Parker, uh, Declan McLeod. Nope, he's not McLeod. It's Declan McMullen. Okay, Dennis Prescott, Derek Miller, DPB. F crew, Gary Phillips, George and Derry, Greg Peterson, Greg K, Jason Nagler, James Biles, uh, Jonathan Pickering, Jose Benito Martinez Jr. It's uh, I gotta sometimes click the screen if your name's long. Uh, Kirk Kermit Jackson, Kimball F. Johnson, Lawrence Petros from Petros Pedals, LPD Pedals. Don't forget, small builders out there, they need support too. You, he's not uh, all his uh, Instagram today. He's doing free shipping. So check that out. Uh, Martin Leahy, uh, Michael Lindner, Michael Mooney, Paul Ostrike, Pedal Pal FX, another pedal company you can support. They have a new pedal out too, by the way. I think it's on back order, but don't forget their other ones, especially if you like the Marshall sound. Jim Geringer, Tim Camacho, Tim Farnsworth, and Todd Flowers. I want to thank all of them for supporting the upper tier uh, to make the live show happen and the podcast. As always, guys, you guys have been awesome. I will see you guys on Wednesday next week. And until then, uh, thank you so much for your time and know your gear.